according to the state agricultural needs. Salinity is one of them, and that has been said first hand by it. Let me please say uh, these two things. So, <clears throat> the first thing I would like to talk about would be the national cooperative, uh, the region uh, farm. Uh, I'm talking about marketing. So, when it comes to marketing prediction uh, process, what happens is uh, a merchant will buy it from the market, and then from this merchant, it will go to the market. From the market, another merchant will pick up. Uh, And what this creates is that basically there's a huge gap between the final, the final consumer and the producer. And this makes uh, price. Um, I don't know why there hasn't been a, um, a cooperative initiative that has been done. I know for a fact that the Dutch Embassy has made a study and that they have um, uh, concluded uh, a viable method in which we can move forward with this, but it has not come to fruition. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. Secondly, um, and very briefly, it's uh, I want to talk about banking and uh, funding for agricultural um, for growers, specifically for growers. Um, banks don't look favorably upon helping growers, um, not as much as other industries, and I think that's something that should definitely change. Um, thirdly, um, I want to speak about energy. Now, <clears throat> as a farmer, if you consume less than 500 kilowatts of energy, um, you pay a price. If you consume more, you pay a higher price. Um, I don't know why. Uh, if we look at the industry, uh, at a different industry, um, for example, we will find that uh, Sana'a industry. So we will find that recently there has been um, a new law that gives five years of fixed power prices, fixed electricity prices for the indus for industrial uh, manufacturing. Also a 10% discount or decrease in the price of power. No such luxuries have been afforded to the agricultural sector. Why? Um, on the contrary, every year we get higher and higher bills. So the price increases every year rather than being fixed. Um, I realize, Mele, that this is about salinity, so I'm going to speak a few words just for you <laughs> and for everybody. This is a very big problem that we're actually facing. I, myself, have faced it firsthand. We had a very, very, um, we had over, let's say, 200 fed dens of uh, land that we had cultivated with stone fruits and uh, citrus that we were forced to remove because of the high salinity of the water. Um, this is an area, the Cairo Alexandria Desert Road, it's one of the most strategic areas in Egypt that for, for, for agricultural exports. Um, the, water is, the water salinity is just simply increasing year by year. The water supply is simply decreasing year by year. And there is no option, or we don't, we haven't come to a solution on how to fix it, um, say like save, uh, expensive uh, fertilizing and um, other um, and other products. Uh, the way we dealt with it was that we decided to shift our um, focus or shift our um, operations from such crops to crops that withstand higher salinity. However, what I'm hearing today is that you can actually fix that problem of salinity. So I'm very excited to hear what everybody has to say. And please, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Helmi. Now, from uh, sketching uh, the problem, 
uh, and we'll look at access to finance, uh, agricultural finance, and uh, and cooperatives. We'll, we'll try to see what we can do uh, about that as well. Uh, but we need partners to work on that. Uh, but let's uh, move to the solutions for uh, for saline uh, agriculture and agriculture under saline conditions. Uh, Rogier Opstal, uh, the uh, the representative of uh, of uh, Desalt, uh, representing a consortium of uh, of knowledge providers partnering up with Egypt. One for uh, for your uh, presence here today. I'd like to thank also Sekem, of course, the Dutch Embassy for your organization and, and the hosting of this event. Um, my name is Roger van Opstel. I'm of the company, the Dutch company Nectera, and I am the project leader of this new, uh, what we call Desalt project uh, that is running for three years and just started until 2022. Um, let me get to the background of, of, of the companies first in this, in this uh, desalt project. Uh, we started a few years ago actually after a question uh, to explore groundwater uh, along the coast. And uh, it was known that this water was uh, brackish. And uh, the question was asked to, uh, to, to not only explore the water, but also find uh, viable ways to use the water uh, commercially, uh, being brackish, of course. So we established a consortium um, of the companies Nectera, uh, the Salt Doctors, or actually its predecessor, uh, Delphi, and uh, IV Water. Now, Nectera is a water company uh, focusing on uh, hydrology and sustainable land and water management. So we are busy with interventions uh, such as water harvesting or soil conditioning, agroforestry, uh, monitoring of uh, irrigation or soil moisture, so things that have much to do with hydrology and, uh, and the soil. Um, the Salt Doctors is a company whose background lies in extensive testing of uh, salt-tolerant crop varieties, uh, annual crop varieties, so um, they train and advise on that. Uh, then Delphi also provides training and consultancy and also research in, in, in a somewhat wider field, I would say, of agriculture and horticulture, also in greenhouses. And um, so, for instance, they are involved in, well, advice or training on pests and diseases or crop management, so more general uh, farming consultancy. Uh, the final company is IV Water, which is a large engineering consultant uh, involved in uh, water and power and infrastructure. Uh, so they design, for instance, water treatment plants uh, or roads or well, all kinds of infrastructure. Um, so we started off uh, a few years ago by, well, making an inventory, I would say, of our chances here in Egypt. And uh, the most important thing we did was to come up with a list, I would say, of possible interventions that would be interesting for Egyptian farmers, small farmers, medium farmers, but also the large farmers. And those interventions fall, I would say, in, at different levels of the salinity problem. Uh, at the highest level, of course, the salinity problem is caused by primarily using too much water. Uh, if you farm in a non or in a negative way, you consume more water than the system is actually replenishing. So uh, gradually your system uh, deteriorates, your fresh water is being used, and what you get in return is salinization. So uh, to, to prevent uh, this at the highest level, water use efficiency is the most important thing, uh, and the farmers play a role in this, but also, uh, well, I would say the public uh, institutes uh, also play an important role, of course. Then at another level, um, if you already have salt conditions in your farm, then of course you want to prevent them from getting any worse. Um, and most farms that I've come across here actually have a condition in the soil, uh, in salinity at least, which is worse than the water uh, quality. So you see there a deterioration of the soil, which increasingly makes it more difficult to farm. And so you would 
want to prevent uh, that situation from getting any worse. And preferably you would mobilize the, uh, the salts uh, out of the root zone uh, so that you would get back to a normal level that would also represent the water quality. And uh, trees, for instance, are an important measure, organic matter to do so. Uh, then um, the final thing, of course, is that once you've done all of this, uh, or together with all of this, you will also, of course, try to maximize your yield if you make smart choices in your uh, crops that you use under those, well, biophysical conditions. Uh, so this is kind of the list of, of fixing a problem quickly, stabilizing it, and coming up with measures which progressively improve the situation and bring it back to, well, more favorable conditions. So uh, this is all technical and very interesting, but of course our interest is how can we make a living out of this as Dutch consultants here in Egypt? And that's not a easy thing to do. Um, so we started a new project focusing on this commercial uh, imp uh, implementation here, and we called it DESALT. And, and DESALT stands for Dutch Egyptian Saline Agriculture and Water Management Learning and Technology. It's a very long word, so that's why we call it DESALT. Uh, but our question now that we started is how can we uh, well, implement and work together with partners in this DESALT? And um, we uh, thought it was a good idea, and luckily also the Dutch grant organization, for which we are very happy, thought it would be a good idea to work with commercial farmers uh, under commercial conditions to see their business cases and to work with them to see where we would be able to create added value. Uh, one of those uh, companies that we now work with is SACEM. Uh, so we have just actually uh, started with uh, the design and the implementation of several pilots representing different business cases here at SACEM. Um, so we have one field with five different potato varieties uh, that we can compare, uh, which have been sowed. Then we have another field where we will uh, cultivate different vegetable crops, so red beet, cabbage, broccoli, so several varieties are there. And uh, recently, actually, we have started to make a design for um, a use of also trees and agroforestry in a system which will help restore the soil. So these are business cases that we want to, uh, to showcase. And we want to understand what, what are the final costs and benefits of the current practices and of potentially new and advanced practices and see how we can then, um, well, make a living out of it. And also, of course, uh, provide added value for the farmers. So this is an important um, a component of the project. Another component is uh, that we will also provide training to as many people as possible. Uh, but we are starting with the extension offices here at SACEM. Uh, so we will train them on saline farming and water management and soil conditioning and things uh, that, uh, that they may, uh, may welcome. And we will also hold some stakeholder events uh, in which we will show what we're doing and also uh, share the results. Now, uh, we're also, uh, we see SACAM, of course, as a very, well, beautiful, it's not just beautifully, <laughs> beautiful here in, in an environmental sense, uh, but also your, 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 your social engagement, uh, your holistic approach, uh, the organic approach, uh, the fact that you work with small farmers is, is very interesting, uh, but it represents one segment of Egyptian farming. There are other segments of Egyptian farming that uh, we also need to address uh, with DESALT. So uh, while well, we expect to add several partners, so this is also an invitation for, for interested farmers to, uh, to approach us to see if we can work together in this project. And then um, I'd like to, to, to say that, of course, we hope uh, that in the next few years we will develop all kinds of beautiful and sustainable, commercially sustainable, but also environmentally sustainable uh, business partnerships. Thank you for your attention.
Thank you for that, uh, for that Rogier. Um, now let's move uh, to the, uh, the panel session. Um, there are some changes, or is one change vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, what, uh, what was shared earlier, uh, because uh, uh, working with partners and seeing who they, uh, who, uh, who they uh, delegated to sit on the panel, we found out that we had a, a manual, uh, and that is a bit embarrassing in these, uh, in these times in which uh, uh, inclusion is, uh, is, is very important. Um, and we found a, a solution to uh, make sure that uh, also the, the youth voice uh, was, uh, was, uh, was brought to the table. Uh, we asked uh, Lotte Deming uh, to, to represent the core, uh, consortium. Uh, she uh, works for Delphi, uh, our privatized extension service, uh, a consultancy firm uh, in, the, in the Netherlands, an agricultural consultancy firm, uh, to give uh, a, a perspective of uh, young people who have an interest to work in agriculture, uh, contrary to what we see too often that young people don't think agriculture is, uh, is interesting. So Lotte, could you please uh, come forward? Uh, then, uh, unfortunately, Dr. Hassan Oshare is not, uh, not there yet. Uh, so let's move uh, to, to our, uh, our hosts. Um, can, we, uh, uh, can we have uh, uh, Dr. Saber Hendawi, uh, um, who works for SACEM uh, for land reclamation. Uh, he has uh, um, decades of experience in organic agriculture, uh, worked for the Egyptian Biodynamic Association, uh, and he lectures at, uh, at Heliopolis University. And importantly, he is a client of uh, uh, the, uh, the diesel project. In traditional development cooperation, we talk about target groups and beneficiaries. Uh, working on the nexus of trade and development, uh, we talk about clients uh, and uh, that is useful to articulate client demand. So thank you for, for being here. And then another representative of potential clients, uh, Mehdat, uh, um, um, sorry, Mehdat El Maligi uh, of uh, the Horticulture Export Improvers Association, a, uh, an association of commercial farmers and exporters um, uh, representing uh, the the market that uh, that Desalt wants to uh, wants to target. So let me first give the uh, uh, give the word uh, uh, to uh, um, uh, to uh, to Mehmet El Meligi. Um, what do you think that uh, uh, the uh, the Desalt project has to offer your members? Um, how do your members now? Um, get knowledge and expertise that they need uh, to move to that le uh, next level and uh, what can the uh, can the uh, uh, the program team learn uh, to be attractive to your membership uh, good evening everybody sorry i was not prepared to uh, I, actually i knew the agenda here just when i arrived but uh, the situation is clear for for a lot of farmers. I think, as Helmi said, uh, five thousand years ago, we had enough water. Uh, we had the, the 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 option to misuse the water and to 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 uh, to lose it as 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 much as we could. And unfortunately, in the last few years, last decades. Uh, the number of people tripled and, uh, and we have uh, the same way of using the very uh, limited and crucial resources that we have, which is the water. I'm not sure uh, everybody knows about the, the movement of water in Egypt. Actually, uh, I'm not sure if I have to say it or not, but uh, uh, briefly, Keda, when we have the, our 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 route of water is coming from Aswan to the sea. It starts in Aswan, 250 ppm. It goes to the Mediterranean, 2,000 ppm. So, so that's the, the level solidity. Yeah. Uh, if you ask somebody from the government, they will tell you because people are feeding the, the, the soil with the fertilizers and the circulation of water. You know, you irrigate, then you go the, the, the excess of water where we have excess aratul every time in the Delta, especially, uh, goes to the drainage. Then the drainage is going again to the canal of water, which is should be fresh. 
if if the fertilizers were the, the only reason of salinity, it was it, it it I think could yeah maybe it's it's better to 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 feed your uh, your plants without putting fertilizer because it's already uh, done. But the problem that uh, it's not only fertilizers, or I mean it's not only chemical fertilizer. It is chemical fertilizer, sewage, factories with no license. They don't have actually drainage in yani the system. They go, they, they work, they process. They process PVC, they process whatever. And they don't have a place for, or, or the, the, the system doesn't have drainage. So you have everything in your water which is the precious thing that defines Egypt long time ago. Uh, this is one. Number two, if you, uh, I'm trying to underline a few points to give an idea uh, in the situation. You have 80% uh, of the land, of the water, are used from 65% of the land very abnormal and you ever should you should have the same ratio because one for then here is like one for then here and this is not the case the case that uh, 65 percent of your land uses 80 percent of the water and i'm talking here raw water because it's not 80 percent if you if you calculate the right uh, the right amount, it's much more. But uh, because you're not using your water once, uh, for he, here is the here is the situation. For, what, what? Welcome, Doctor uh, Sher. Good, uh, good that you could join us. So, could could you please um, um, say something about about your membership? And, and how how Heya works with its membership uh, okay. to, to build uh, to build uh, their capacity to get access to uh, to uh, to a state of the art uh, knowledge and expertise, and how that could uh, could align with this uh, this project. Okay, Heya started in 1996 establishment. Uh, I mean documentation. I think it started really in 1998. Uh, the real work. The idea was to have a group of people. Uh, that are working, that, that, that are farmers slash exporters working in uh, commodities that have very high potential and this potential is not in use. So at the time, for example, we could not touch citrus, we could not touch potatoes because these the commodities are, are running already. We started with table grapes, we started with strawberries, Mango and melon. Melon is out of the business already. Mango, the idea was to have new varieties, the American varieties, especially the American varieties of mango, so we can export them. Because at that time, the first of all, local varieties are not good for export, no shelf life. And the prices in Egypt was much better than, than abroad. So uh, one of the base, main, uh, main uh, rules was, was to have your doors open, to have like uh, a private uh, uh, cooperation, uh, cooperation, private cooperatives, because you know that also cooperatives in Egypt uh, are not going very well. Mm. So at the time we started, we had uh, we were exporting 5,000 tons of uh, for Europe, 5,000 tons of table fresh uh, table grapes. Uh, lately we're exporting almost 140,000 tons. We went through definitely number one extension ex uh, ex extension from all over the world. We're bringing uh, we we already bring. Uh, consultants from Latin America, from Chile, from South Africa, from Israel, from all over the world. Uh, and we had united the, the, the efforts more than the consultants because 
and you know when when the group of people group of businessmen are sitting together talking together just talking together they have deal together abroad for for example importing fertilizers if you want to talk about the company uh, the, definitely they can reach better deals but this was the idea uh, a bit later we had uh, for uh, 42000 square meter of land in the airport, Egyptian Cairo airport, uh, to, to establish a perishable terminal. For, because before this, we had in the same fridge, flowers, onions, body, by the way. We have somebody shipping the body, dead body, in the same. Uh, to have a good transit area, to have uh, to, actually to have a, a transit area, we had to establish this uh, uh, terminal. Thank you, thank you for sh for sharing. Um, I I hear that uh, to uh, to boost the uh, the Egyptian export uh, sector, um, uh, farmers learn uh, farmers and exporters learn together, sit together, mm. uh, and uh, and make use of uh, of. Uh, of of knowledge from elsewhere, and I think that should be a, a, a good breeding ground for for partnership. So I'm looking forward to partnership between Hay and the CISO, uh, DISO project. Uh, to to move to 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 Sekem, uh, um, Dr. Hendawi, what is your has your experience with this project been uh, been so far? Uh, these guys have been uh, have been around for for some time. You've been exchanging with them uh, as a client. What what are they doing right, and what what could they improve? Uh, the first uh, will come in, in Sikam. Uh, I am working in, in Sikam uh, 20 years ago for uh, agriculture, uh, biodynamic agriculture. Uh, and starting for uh, uh, project of this country, uh, Dr. Ibrahim Wajibi started with Sikam company with uh, organic agriculture. agriculture. And starting for the seed, uh, using the composting and uh, the fertilizer, and the community, community, community. So starting for the save the water, the first from waste. And uh, we have a lot of experience for salad, uh, working with uh, uh, salad water. Uh, starting, uh, I think, 15 years ago, starting with uh, we have area uh, with. I said it's about 10,000 BBM uh, salinity. So I think the cultivation of salicornia as a source of the, the model of the plant for uh, desalination. And uh, after that, we into the SICAM is a school uh, for all uh, researchers in Egypt because uh, uh, every year we introduce a little variety to adaptation and acclimatization and desalination. And we can compare this stuff. The uh, comparison uh, reasons for the leaf for this variety uh, uh, with uh, the with uh, distribution project now, uh, starting for training uh, and uh, for students in renewable sonography uh, for sustainability and learning a lot of or a lot of uh, a lot of uh, idea uh, to how to improve the cell desal motor, how to use it. And starting in Sikam now uh, for some experiment, experimental in, in, uh, in Salimator uh, area uh, under the uh, Salim project, using the some variety uh, to compare resi resistance to this variety to desalination, and uh, such as yeast, such as uh, red cabbage, uh, white cabbage, broccoli, uh, potato, a lot of variety. And also from our experience in Sikam, we have a lot of variety of resistance for the salinity, such as uh, uh, quinoa, uh, amaranthus, uh, uh, atriplex, uh, for pig animals. Uh, and so we can compare it. And with this experiment, use the intercropping system uh, to sustainability, with using the leguminous crops, with, with the new crops for intercropping to save the soil. And, uh, and also, agroforest system to different different level of root system uh, in working in the, in the different level for for uh, for uh, roots root 
area uh, uh, to uh, uh, solve the problem of conservation also. And uh, we have lab in bite in Helioblast Best Lab for biotechnology lab for production bacteria for the uh, desalination bacteria such as lactobacillus bacteria production a lot of carboxylic amino acids for uh, and amino acids uh, for the decrease the effect of salinity. Uh, we now plan in, in Seacom company in two locations to starting and starting actually for uh, 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 cultivation, uh, this variety comparison reduced from this sort of project and uh, our variety uh, to take the result. And according to this, also we have a, co a cooperation between the Lyublis University uh, and the uh, uh, Rikul Masri is Egyptian, Egyptian for one, one and a million half a ton, especially in Mogra uh, area, according to cooperation between the Lyublis, uh, starting before cultivation. Uh, because uh, the salinity uh, uh, around the 4,000 to 8,000 uh, 8, ppm uh, salinity in this area, uh, starting before we have medicinal and aromatic plant to resistance of some experimental now for uh, quinoa, marjoram, uh, phenyl, uh, a lot of variety in this area, every cadam or every, every crop, under also is uh, flat, flat soils and uh, in, in line soils to get down to this area. And also make uh, some intercropping system with wet clover, wet clover, and uh, lotus, and uh, and use some some plants such as uh, uh, some uh, some trees also this formation of and the and a lot of legumes crop to uh, save the water, save the soil, and save the water and the high percentage of the soil according to biodynamic uh, cultivation and also with biodynamic association working with a lot of farmers from Aswan to Makro. Uh, so we work in uh, different conditions every day uh, under Seekem. Thank you so much. It's clear that uh, Seekem is, uh, is, is a place uh, for, for innovation, for, for learning together, for, for co-creation, and also a place from which uh, the, the knowledge uh, that we learn can also spread uh, to, to others within this country. Because uh, it's about knowledge exchange, not about uh, not just about knowledge transfer. I'd like to ask the doctor. Uh, uh, you, uh, you just uh, uh, arrived in Egypt last week. Uh, a fresh, fresh perspective of things. Uh, you have engaged with uh, with uh, Egyptian professionals, uh, uh, Egyptian uh, uh, students at uh, at uh, here at uh, at, uh, at uh, Shams University. You've engaged with people who have taken. What what have you learned? What what are you surprised? Uh, what, what, what do you take home as, a, as an insight uh, from, from Salah and other folks in Egypt? I think here, uh, especially in SIG and, and also in Heliopolis University, we are innovating a lot. And I think to appeal also youth and young professionals to agriculture, uh, appealing as the innovative and novel uh, ideas in agriculture. For me, I, I didn't have a background in agriculture, and by chance, I did some courses in Lachman University in agriculture. And it was so fascinating because they have these novel ideas in innovative forms of agriculture. And um, I think that also made me inspired and to, to, to have a career in, uh, in agriculture. And I think also it's important uh, that that Seikum and other universities, and also Einstein University, are looking to uh, new ways of uh, agriculture for the, the intercropping, but also uh, looking more at the mechanization, which could be uh, maybe also in Seikum, uh, new ideas to, uh, to have also a bit of the culture switch, switch to more mechanization and to, uh, to have to, to appeal also the youth. And I think Thanks, uh, thanks, Doctor. Now, uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Hassan, um, you have been working on uh, saline agriculture for, for for a long time. Uh, you came to the Netherlands last year uh, to to Leeward, uh, to share your your uh, experience uh, and, and your and your ideas. Um, you've engaged with the uh, with the pea salt uh, uh, cluster. What what are uh, things that that the team may have overlooked. What, where, where do you see great opportunities uh, for, for knowledge uh, development and knowledge sharing with farmers?
like uh, first of all i'd like to thank you for uh, your kind invitation to speak with you and uh, i do apologize to be uh, very late because we lost the road actually uh, well uh, i was fortunate enough to attend the uh, future salam agriculture in holland last september as we uh, uh, I'm representing the, the, the Desert Research Center and the, particularly the Egyptian Center of Excellence for Salam Agriculture. This center was devote, uh, is devoting only for uh, solving the problem of salinity, soil, saline soil, and saline water irrigation. And uh, uh, this center was established recently, in uh, 2013, uh, and uh, uh, it has uh, a lot of efforts uh, concerning the degraded uh, saline soil and uh, uh, underground saline groundwater. Uh, actually, we have been engaged in several projects uh, working on salinity. Uh, particularly with uh, small farmers, and nowadays we are working with a big, big, uh, what they call it, mega project in Almogra. Uh, Almogra, uh, representing around 1,500, uh, uh, 1.5 million acres, and uh, this is one of the biggest mega agricultural projects in Egypt. And all the pro the area is affected by, by salinity, whether in soil and in, in water. And uh, uh, so we are working with investors, and we are working also with the small holders. And uh, also we have been engaged in several projects in North Sinai, in one of the worst uh, soil in Egypt. They call it Sahlatin. Salatina has around 50,000 acres, and it's one of part of the mega project, also uh, 1.5 million uh, acres in Egypt, uh, where salinity is very, very high, particularly soil salinity. Although they use uh, mixed water from Nile and drained water, but uh, they call it the through the Salam channel. But salinity is heavily, uh, soil is heavily saline. And the farmers, uh, at the beginning, they didn't know how to deal with kind of salinity in soil. So they practiced the traditional agricultural practices. They learned from the Nile Valley, which never uh, to be adapted with the, the, the salinity condition. So we started at, at the beginning uh, funds from IFAD, and we started with around 20 farmers. Then we reached almost 2,000 farmers uh, in Sahel uh, Nowadays, we are focusing on uh, uh, intercropping system of halophyte with vegetable. We were very clever. Uh, in growing uh, fodder crops, cereals, uh, oil crops, and uh, fiber crops in saline soil with irrigated with the saline water. But uh, we never tasted vegetables. When I went to uh, Netherlands last summer, I met uh, some people from Delphi, and uh, they uh, encouraged me to work on vegetables particular tomato, potato, this kind of thing. And uh, when I came back uh, and uh, I transferred this knowledge to some investors, they were very happy to work on digital, to particular tomato. And uh, I was uh, happy enough to have uh, a giant project, they call it multinational project between Egypt, uh, Italy, France, Spain, and Portugal. And this was a project funded by uh, Prima. And uh, they call it Hal Halo Farm. Halo Farm means integrated 
uh, halophyte with vegetable. So in Egypt, we choose salicornia as a halophyte, particularly salicornia biglavi. Salicornia biglavi is, uh, they call it the very, it's one of the most important halophytes nowadays in Europe because they use it as a vegetable. They eat it. I, I ate it in different dishes. And uh, also the seeds could be used for oil and for medicinal purposes. And uh, the byproducts of the extraction can be used as animal feed. Okay. So we'll integrate salicornia with tomato. Uh, and uh, as you know, tomato in Egypt is uh, planted in different uh, period of the year, but uh, salicorn is a perennial plant. And uh, we also selected another uh, annual crop, uh, quinoa. We have tested quinoa in the North Sinai. It grows very well. And we also tested quinoa in Venice with Governorate and the Minya and the, the New Valley. Uh, we got the project funded by USAID three years ago, and it is ended by the last year uh, for uh, growing and processing quinoa for uh, food, for uh, to feed the, the local people in the New Valley. And uh, really, it sounds it was sound very, very well. And everybody know now quinoa, and uh, we taught the, the ladies how to cook quinoa and different dishes, okay? Thank, thank you for sharing. I, it's especially interesting to hear about quinoa because I, I noted that in the registration for the webinar, a, a quinoa breeder from Wageningen University in research uh, is, uh, is part, uh, part of, our, uh, of our audience. Yeah. Maybe that would create opportunities uh, for, for partnership. Uh, but let me go back to, uh, to uh, Mr. Mehdad. Uh, when you hear these opportunities of these, these new crops, uh, and from the perspective of people who market and sell, uh, what what could be done to, uh, to 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 develop the market for for crops like quinoa and 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 for uh, for salicornia, or is it difficult uh, to to create a market for for those things that do well and so? I don't know them actually. I don't know. I remember. We tried for so these new crops that we are trying to, to find. So we can talk with the people that we are going, I don't know why, to grow there, to, to survive in, and to, uh, to suffer in this kind of land and water. Anyway, uh, I think we need to know how many, uh, what acreage of these crops worldwide to, to start with because if if, if you are, you have 10x worldwide and you are going to grow 20x you should be a bit worried about marketing but if you have 10x and you are going to grow 1x and you can find somebody to consume at least Maybe it's a it's a very big opportunity. Maybe these things it could be for processing, for example, uh, something uh, that we don't know about. But I think we need some data about this you know, worldwide. The, the quinoa, for example, the acreage worldwide. Do we have any uh, any uh, uh, how many acre acre acreage? What is it? No, no, no. Worldwide, we need to know that we don't have. I mean, in, uh, quinoa is a new, a new crop, was introduced just in five years or in Egypt, I mean. But it is originally cultivated in Latin America, in Peru, Nicaragua, uh, Chile, and uh, all these countries rely mainly on quinoa as bread. And they cook, they they bake it as bread and they cook it for different dishes. So this is one of the most important crops in Latin America. But in Egypt, 
هو ده في القريه بتاعت اي سي اي سي اوبرتونيتيز فور فور فردر بارتنرشيب فردر انجيجمنت ان فردر ديسكشن اباوت ذا بوتنشال اوف اوف تيم وا وي ار ابروتشينج ذا اند اوف 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 ذا اوف ذا ويبينار تايم بت اي وود لايك تو بروفايد ذا اوبرتونيتي فور 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 ذا اودينس اف ذير سمثينج ذات هازنت بين سيد اور سمثينج ذات يو هاف ا كويشن اباوت Uh, and something that uh, that really needs to be raised. Uh, um, anyone want to share something? Quick question for Dr. Sabir. Um, you mentioned something about uh, desalinating bacteria. I was hoping you can tell us any information about it. This is the first I've heard about it, and uh, I find it quite interesting. The desalination bacteria you had, uh, you're working on in Heliopolis University. Um, yes. Say, uh, if you can, please. The Stractobacillus production, more uh, amino acids and the carboxylic acid, uh, longer chain, uh, uh, change uh, the salt, From the soluble, the soluble uh, <laughs> to non-soluble, so decrease the uh, uh, absorption from the cells inside the, the plant. So to increase the effect of the of the cells. This bacteria working very well, well for collect the, the cells uh, particles to uh, un- non-soluble. Uh, uh, um, so just a follow-up question. This is for to treat soil. to treat the soil, not the water, yes? Yes. Okay, thank you, Doctor. And I also have a, a question for, uh, for you, and then, uh, then I would like, um, uh, as, uh, as you're asking the question, the people on Zoom uh, to, uh, to try uh, to, to formulate any questions that you would like to ask or contribute. Uh, and um, after Helmi is done, uh, we'll get uh, one question from, uh, from, the, uh, from the webinar audience in here. Helmi. They are giving distance. Because of Corona. I would like to- In your life? You are attending the course on an idea to in Facebook. Name for the there is a link. In agricultural development, something oh. which was not on the equation uh, until sure recent. You should study. We are happy. The Open University can support you and everyone else in Egypt. Renewable energy today, not tomorrow and not in 10 years, but yesterday, is cheaper than government uh, energy for you. But this is something I can I can calculate for you. We are moving to more than one and a half mega of, of uh, renewable energy in Sekem this year, not only because we want to go to paradise and we are angels and we are nice, which we are, but even more so because it makes visible economic sense and will save you, I think, 30%, 35% in your energy bill today. Okay? So this is a hint for you, which is, which I would like to connect with the other hint. I think uh, we in Sekin believe that in the next 30, 40 years, the world will go for sustainable agriculture, organic agriculture. Egypt will go for organic agriculture and sustainable agriculture because there are many, many reasons. Climate change is one, water is the other. We are saving on the crop, as experts who know better than me, 20 to up to 30% of water per crop. in organic farming, in, 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 in sustainable farming. But the good news now, this is the something which we are just breaking through this year in connection with energy and with new organic fertilization, which we have developed together with some of our colleagues at Heliopolis University. We are now at 40% of the cost of chemical fertilizer for the NPK. Huh? Now this is the ordinary mainstream story. I'm not telling you go to be an angel. I'm telling you save money on your fertilization, which will make up to 10-15% of your current uh, cost structure.
because organic farming will help us to deal with salinity in a better way. Together with lower costs and together with renewable energy, I think it can be a game changer. Thanks, thanks for this, uh, this contribution. Uh, and linking to one other point that, that you raised, um, there are uh, international development banks like the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development uh, who have uh, facilities like the, uh, the Green Economy Financing Facility. Um, I know that uh, uh, the Dutch uh, Development Bank, FMO, uh, the, the Dutch Bank, Rabobank, uh, which is working with the Ag uh, Agricultural Bank of Egypt, uh, they also have a strong interest in climate finance. And these technologies, uh, uh, they, uh, they are looking for bankable business cases, financial business cases. So if people have, that, uh, uh, have those opportunities, then money shouldn't be the problem but how to get to a, a, a bankable business case. Uh, we'd love to help you, uh, link you and others to, uh, to, uh, to experts who can, who can help you there. I'd like to, before we get the question from, uh, from, uh, from the World Wide Web, uh, I pass the mic to, uh, to Eric, uh, who, we, uh, who we bumped from, uh, from, uh, from the panel. Um, you are a, uh, a passionate believer in sustainable uh, agriculture because it's good business sense. Uh, is there anything you've heard uh, or haven't heard uh, that you feel that uh, that should be shared? Um, thank you, Anella. Um, I heard two very exciting things today, and I'm happy to hear about bacteria. I'm eager to see what we can, how we can use them in SACEM the coming period, and of course about the price of uh, organic fertilizer compared to uh, synthetic fertilizer. So, for me, I'm excited to hear those two things for now and let's see if we can catch more of those ideas and combine them together and see how we can implement them in this uh, project for now. Uh, for that Eric, uh, let me look at the technical team to see if we can manage to to bring the digital world, the online world uh, and the world here in, uh, in, uh, in, in uh, Bilbeis together uh, and if we can manage uh, the technology in asking a question uh, from, uh, from, from the Zoom session. Sigwarts, do we have anything? No, then if, we, if we're waiting for that, I see a hand uh, over there and I would like to give you the opportunity to, uh, to ask something. Hi, good evening. It, it's a little bit of a broader um, question here. So I'm from GIZ and we're working on agricultural innovation and for us, our focus is smallholder farmers. So I hear about technology and I hear about commercialization and we have Haya, we have SACOM, but what is really important and we are partnering or will be partnering with SACOM, we will be partnering with Haya as well. I think also what the discussion really is, is I mean the majority is smallholder farmers and there is a lack of access, there is a lot of innovative practices internationally in Egypt proven, et cetera. So maybe just to hear a little bit more also how do you sort of, how do we reach and access those smallholder farmers. And we do through, for example, SACOM, through the outgrower schemes, um, through youth, we're going to target young graduates. I mean, there are certain ways, but it would be interesting just to hear specifically if there's been any thought with regards to this project of how to, yeah, reach out to smallholder farmers. Thank you, Miriam. Um, I would like to give that question to, to, uh, to Rogier. Uh, but I first want to see if we can get, uh, get a Zoom question in there, and then I'll give you the, the last word. Uh, yes. Hello. Hello. Could you please introduce yourself and, uh, and, and give your question? Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Mohammed Abdulman. I work uh, in the, as a senior advisor at the Regional Office for the Near East and North Africa, WFAO, here in Cairo. And uh, we see this uh, very interesting topic uh, for us also for our program. And we'd also like to thank SICAM for this very good initiative they are, they are doing. My question here is just related to, as we are talking now about most of the time on the new land, and the uh, uh, groundwater, salinity of the groundwater, and so on and so forth. But how about the old land? How about this land in the North Delta that will be impacted by climate change, the sea level rise, and the seawater intrusion? 
that will affect uh, maybe millions of dens and, and uh, will also have a serious impact on the small scale farmers in, in, in Delta. So I think also it's also about time also to look for some option. Uh, we already, the climate change already here with us is not really coming uh, uh, very soon, it's already there. Uh, 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 salinity of the old land have been increasing and also will increase for the next maybe uh, 50, 100 years. So I think it's about time also to think uh, uh, about the old land and how we can deal with it. And I will uh, like to thank uh, uh, the gentleman who, who represents the, the, the project diesel line or desalinity, uh, the one of, uh, with Egypt. And I, I hope also they can try to uh, uh, look for some options coming from a country like Netherlands, which is a very good uh, uh, reputation in working with salinity. Uh, uh, this is it for me now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, good that you can join us uh, uh, over Thanks. over the Zoom. I, I see that Dr. Hassan uh, would like to uh, respond uh, to that. So could you briefly uh, yeah, touch on the yeah. new lands issue? Okay, I think he is right, and his concern is is is, is, is okay. And the uh, the problem of uh, uh, the all the lands in Egypt is a big issue, because we have already around two million acres are heavily salinized and the, the production of this land is very, very low nowadays. And uh, I think we expect to this size of land will be increased because of the sea intrusion and the, the wrong uh, practices of irrigation, all the irrigation system in this land. And uh, we also uh, lucky to have a project funded by Jeff uh, small funds uh, from Jeff working in Kafreshe Governorate. And uh, I invite some of you, if you'd like to come to see what we are doing in this problem. Because uh, Kafreshe is very effect, uh, infected by salinity. And uh, we surprised that to some people use drainage water for irrigation, not Nile, Nile water, which is, is, is a disaster, actually. I have to say that. So in this project, we introduced uh, some uh, approaches to uh, uh, treat the degraded saline soil, okay? And uh, also we uh, introduced some uh, crops, uh, particularly uh, fodder crops, uh, like tritical, uh, like uh, uh, sorghum and the uh, bermillet and the uh, uh, fodder beet, for example, and also we uh, introduce quinoa to some people there to improve the, 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 their income because quinoa is very expensive in Egypt nowadays. So we are working the degraded saline soil in this government as example and, and several approaches, how to treat the saline soil and how to introduce the uh, convenient uh, crops to be adapted for such salinity. Thank you very much for sharing. I, I recently spoke to a, to a PhD student from Wageningen, Mohamed Taufik, who also said that he felt that uh, the, the farmers in the Delta uh, were, the, were the most neglected because the development organizations look to Upper Egypt, uh, uh, the government looks at the new land, but who looks at the, at the farmers in, in, in the Delta? So let me, uh, uh, as promised, give the last word uh, uh, the, to the person uh, between us and our refreshments. Uh, so maybe that's a motivation to, uh, to, be, to be frank of, and, and, and to, be, uh, to be crisp and to be short. Um, Rogier, what have you taken up uh, in this conversation? Uh, uh, what, uh, what can be done uh, differently? And also, uh, res please respond to, uh, to Miriam's questions about uh, how, how can this uh, uh, knowledge and expertise be relevant to smallholder farmers? Thank you. Um, thank you also for your participation today. Um, well, I've I've learned actually too much to uh, to to uh, well reply on everything today. I would say I know that uh, my gentleman here and and beside me have a, a wealth of experience and knowledge, and uh, I think we'll be.
a, a challenge, uh, but also a priority to make sure that uh, well, all of these suggestions and knowledge are uh, brought into the project as much as possible. Um, so so um, I, I do realize that uh, our, our, now it stopped. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm shouting. Um, I do realize that, though, that uh, our, our effort in this project is somewhat limited, uh, unfortunately. So we do have to uh, prioritize. I know that, uh, uh, for instance, the intercropping that you mentioned with canola or tomato, these are actually things that we are uh, looking into. So we find that very interesting. It would be, uh, well, very interesting, uh, interested to work together and uh, uh, learn mutually from those experiences. And um, much of the project is, of course, about how we can outreach uh, to other communities. So the, the, the comments that you made on, on, on the people in the Delta, uh, we will certainly take that into consideration. And now, finally, uh, to, to respond to the question uh, on um, how we can reach the smallholders, um, one of the reasons that we have teamed up, actually, with SACOM is because of the experience here at SACOM with uh, doing just so. Uh, judging by your questions, I, I, I think you should definitely be someone uh, that we should be talking to. Uh, but uh, the idea really for this, uh, this DSALT project is that the basis for the future, I would say, is a certain center uh, where we can continue research and training and commercial production for this DSALT. Because of the different conditions in Egypt, um, we, we do realize that this may mean we have several centers in the future, hopefully us, but otherwise, uh, at least in Egypt, that, uh, that operate under different uh, biophysical conditions for different client groups, different crops. Uh, so I think those centers, such as the center here, uh, but hopefully new centers, they're an important base to touch uh, with these smallholders. Initially, we, we will be uh, training, working together with the extension services here at uh, SACAM, but we're definitely open. So, so after the meeting, I, I hope we have time to uh, to discuss. And uh, yeah, I think I hope I've answered your question there. Well, with uh, with those uh, last words, we have come to the end of this uh, this hybrid event. Uh, I must say, I learned a lot. Uh, I learned a lot uh, on satellite agriculture. Uh, I've also learned a lot on, uh, on organizing a hybrid event, uh, how, uh, how technology can slip up, uh, but also uh, what, what works and what, uh, what doesn't work. Uh, I hope that this is the beginning of more uh, live and hybrid events uh, in which uh, the Dutch can partner with Egypt and with uh, representatives of the international community uh, to together co-create those solutions uh, to the global problems that, uh, that, that we're facing. Uh, and, without, uh, and, and one last thing I would like to do is uh, thank the people who have made this possible, uh, the people who have worked hard behind the scenes uh, to get things organized. Uh, Sikwart uh, uh, for now and his team uh, at SACEM, uh, uh, thanks for a brilliant job. And also thanks to, uh, to Orma Abdelatif uh, who, uh, who, uh, who spent a lot of his free time uh, to work harder to, uh, to, uh, to, to, make this, uh, to make this a success. Uh, um, thanks so much for that. And thanks uh, to all you uh, across the world. Uh, we had participants from Brazil, South Africa, uh, Australia. We had um, uh, potato breeders uh, from the Netherlands, uh, canola breeder, as I mentioned, a lot of people from Garteninger uh, who, who listened in. Uh, people are very eager to, uh, to hear what the opportunities are here in Egypt, uh, very eager to partner and to make things work. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for being in Thank you. Thank you. There, there is, uh, there is uh, uh, European privacy uh, uh, legislation that, that will make our life uh, a bit difficult. So we'll ask all those who have uh, participated in the webinar uh, to uh, whether we can, uh, uh, whether they want to sign up for more about the Netherlands Master Partnership and more about the diesel project. And I'm sure that they'll say yes. And then we'll broaden your network and ours. Thank you so much. <laughs>
So thank you very much, everyone, for coming today. Uh, today is the starting point. It's not the end. We are planning to do uh, probably a seminar every few months. It's kind of bringing touch and to see the knowledge of change together in different interesting topics. I think now it's time to charge our energy and get some heat. So now it's time also to 